Okay, you are recording. Perfect. Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Ben Griffith. Um, I've done speech and debate for quite a while. Um, one of my favorite activities is Mars Hill, um, which is what I'm about to present for you. Um, oh, okay, Ben, i got to just stop you. I have been, like, killing my people about saying, um, yeah, and you've done yeah. about four or five of them right there in a row. Pretty bad. <laughs> are you? you? Okay. It's, it's something that you just continue to work on through, like, all the forensics, so I will, I will do my best to refrain okay. from saying, um. Okay. Do you want me to introduce myself again? No. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> So, so, uh, there it is again. Mars Hill is a great activity. The reason that I like Mars Hill is because it's really applicable for, for all of life. I mean, I've used Mars Hill personally outside of speech and debate several times. Just at school, when a guy comes up to me, he, uh, you know, on Monday, this was just recently, he came up to me and he said, hey, can I use your phone charger? Because he didn't have his phone charger. And we were just having a casual conversation, and we started talking about uh, all sorts of things where where Mars Hill and the skills that I've learned from Mars Hill kind of helped me to, to, to share some Christian truths with him. The point of Mars Hill, like Mrs. Schwager said, is to be casual and to, to present not in a systematic, formulaic way. So when I give my speech, I'm not going to give you three or four points, and I'm not going to give you the, the gospel Roman road or something like that, because the point is to be casual and relational about it. You're not trying to attack the person that you're speaking to, and you're not trying to force them or coerce them into becoming a Christian. That's not the point at all. It's really to develop, develop relationships. So the way it would kind of work is you're talking to somebody and you're saying, well, what do you like to do for fun? And they're like, oh, I really like music or I love mu movies. And based off of what they've said, you start having a conversation with them and they say, I really like this song. And then you start talking about the song and it's, it's very casual, it's laid back, but you're, you're talking about the truths or the uh, discrepancies or the inaccuracies of that song, if that makes sense. So with that, um, I can do a few different, few different songs or movies. So I've done Thor before. If you guys have seen Thor, um, Katy Perry's Firework, uh, or we can go more recent. We can do Team by Lord. You guys are familiar with that one, okay? Um, we could also do Pompeii Bastille. So which of those do you guys like? What's what's your favorite among those? Do you have Team. 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 Okay. And, and, and really, when you do this, when you're preparing your, however Mrs. Schwager has you do it, you should pick your favorite songs, um, the ones that you, you really enjoy. Um, I was going to try to prepare Hozier, Take Me to Church. I don't know if you guys have heard that it's song. song. It's a fantastic song, but if you're up for a challenge, do that one, because it's very, very difficult to, to respond to it from a Christian perspective, because he's pretty much directly attacking the church. So you have to be you know, ready for that. So this really is a fun activity. Um, if, if, you're, if you enjoy, you know, analyzing your culture, stuff like that. Okay, so you guys said team, by Lord? Okay. So should I just do a standard six-minute speech? Yeah, however you want to do it. Okay, cool. So everybody in this room is probably familiar with the song, Team, by Lord. If you're not, then you probably have never listened to the radio in your life, because it's <laughs> always on the radio. You're probably a little bit sick of the song at this point, because it's always on the radio. And by always, I mean if it turns off on 96.1, you can tune into 98.9 to hear the middle of the song. And by the time it finishes on 99.9, team has started back up again. So it's a very popular song right now. And it's interesting to kind of explore why the song Team by Lore is so popular. Because we're all identifying with it somehow. We're all enjoying either the rhythm of it, the lyrics of it. Maybe it's just Lord's voice. Maybe it's the fact that Lord is 16, but she sounds like she's much older. Whatever it is, we love the song Team by Lord. Or at some point in our life, we probably enjoyed it since it's so popular on the radio. So let's go ahead and talk about the song. There's, there's a lot of interesting concepts in, in the lyrics of the song Team. Lord, it, it kind of starts out with a call, um, send the call out, send the call out, that's the repeating line at the beginning of the song, team. Um, then she goes into this, this call to, to her friends or to her team. She says, call the ladies out during their finery, a hundred jewels on throats, a hundred jewels between the teeth. And then she goes into talking about the boys, their skin and craters like the moon. So these lyrics are pretty obscure, kind of ambiguous. If we don't really think about what they're saying, we may not really pick up on it. So when she's talking about the ladies with jewels on throats and jewels between their teeth, she's talking about women who have tried to, per to perfect their identity or a certain genre of identity by 
jewel, using jewelry or beauty products to, to beautify themselves and to make themselves fit in, to make themselves part of the ideal image of a woman or ideal image of a female. But then what's interesting is she contrasted with the boys with skin and craters like the moon. moon. What, what possibly could that mean, skin and craters like the moon? Well, in my own research, I've discovered that, that the most likely interpretation of skin and critters like the moon is, is imperfections, blemishes, acne scars, or something like that. So, so the boys in their imperfect state, and, and the women trying to present a facade of, of how perfect they are with the jewels on throats and the jewels in between their teeth, the concept is that we're trying to fit in and we're trying to live up to an image and an identity. I think this is something that all of us in common have struggled with, especially in our younger years, that's something that we struggle with, the concept of peer pressure and the concept of identity. You look in the mirror and you say, who am I and what, what am I doing with my life? Do people accept me? Am I getting enough likes on Facebook or am I getting enough likes on Instagram? Or maybe you're a little bit more secure than that, but you just want your friends to, to really be friends with you. And we try to live up to a certain cultural norm or identity by dressing a certain way or by acting a certain way. But what Lord is doing is embracing the imperfections in this song. She's saying it's okay that we look like this. But I really want to spend time looking at the chorus because the chorus is really interesting what she says. She says, we live in cities you'll never see on screen. Not very pretty, but we sure know how to run things. We're living in the ruins of a palace within my dreams and you know we're on each other's team. That's kind of her her lyrics of, of the chorus. So first she says we live in cities that we never see on screen. So in other words, she's saying the screens, Hollywood, have portrayed cities and have portrayed everyday life in a way that we can never really attain. We live in cities that you never see on screen. They're not very pretty, but we sure know how to run things. So she's kind of accepted the fact that they're imperfect. She's accepted the fact that they have flaws, but in the midst of that, they sure know how to run things. So they're, they're making the best of their situation regardless. Now she goes on and says, we're living in the ruins of a palace within my dreams. Again, a really interesting lyric because what she's saying there is we're living in the ruins of a palace within my dreams. So she dreamt of being royals, referring to another one of her songs. She has a common theme of, of royals uh, being a queen. She uses these phrases all the time in her songs. So she's living in the ruins of a palace within her dreams because it's really actually not attainable. Because culture and society has told her life and love should look like this. But in reality, life and love is looking like this. And so she's kind of coping with that reality. And then she says, and you know we're on each other's team, so it's kind of this struggle, let's come together and make do with what we have. The next lyric, I think, is the most interesting of all of them. She says, I'm kind of over getting told to throw my hands up in the air. I'm kind of older than I was when I rebelled without a care. So there. So that's a very, very interesting song lyric coming from a 16-year-old singer just now coming into the the music industry. If you contrast it with songs from Usher or songs from Tiger Cruz where you say, I throw my hands up in the air sometimes singing Ayo, Gotta Let Go, or maybe Kesha with her songs about partying and, and living life just because it's in the moment and, and there's no tomorrow. The DJ's got us falling in love tonight. And then Lord comes in straightforward and bold, says, I'm kind of over getting told to throw my hands up in the air. So there. So what is this reflecting about our culture? What does this say about our generation? Is our generation over getting told to throw our hands up in the air? So we've seen the lies that Hollywood's portraying to us. We've seen the lies that our culture gives us and says, hey, life can be this perfect. Hey, life should look like this. Throw your hands up in the air, live without a care. And then Lord comes in and says, wait a minute. It's not that perfect. It's not that beautiful. We're living in the ruins of a palace within our dreams, but we're on each other's team. And that's her concept in this song. So the interesting Christian truths about this song is that we are all broken people, but we can be on each other's team when we come together in the community of Christ. Because what Christ does for our lives is transforms us and makes us beautiful creations. Because the world cannot make us perfect. The world cannot per give us anything that's going to be beautiful, flawless, and amazing. But God can completely transform our lives and make us beautiful creations for who we are. In, for, for who we are as transformed in Christ. And so that's the truth behind the song Team by Royal, or the song Team by Lord. That was excellent. That was just fantastic. It seems like you've spent a lot of time analyzing. I mean, you're paying attention and you're figuring out ways in order to, to talk about truths 
Honestly, that song I've never researched really. Um, really? I, I, I say I have, I googled the lyric once, um, but what, what I do is my sister Lydia, if you guys know her, some of you know her, um, we listen to this music in the car all the time and we just talk about it. It's not like a, oh, I'm, I have to work on Mars Hill, so can you help me out with this? It's just like what we like to do. So when we're listening to music, we just start talking about the lyrics. We're like, oh, the, these lyrics are so good. And then we start talking about, well, what does she mean by this? And then we figure it out. So if you have a friend or a sibling that you like doing that with, that's honestly a great way to do it. Um, it's really an enjoyable activity. It's a, it's a great exercise because it's critical thinking. We listen to this music all the time. So if we're listening to it, why not know what it means? So, yeah. That's great. I've never heard this song. Really? It's a great song. Haven't you been in the computer lab during fourth period? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions for Ben? Could you speak to kind of how you attack? Is there, I know you say no formula, but there is a sense of organization to what you're doing. Sure. Um, oh, there it is again. You'll just have to yell at me every time I say, um, I, it should, it's a debater habit because everything's on the fly. Anyways, so, so what I do is I, I listen to a song, and then I kind of write down common themes in it. So, for example, the Pompeii song, I was left to my own devices. Many days fell away with nothing to show. So right there, we have the first section of the first verse, and we see, first off, He's left alone to his own devices, so a theme of loneliness and a theme of independence or responsibility, right? So you could just write, out, write down loneliness, independence, responsibility. Many days fell away with nothing to show. So accountability, because he's going to have to show to someone, apparently, because he's saying many days fell away with nothing to show. So accountability, maybe laziness. You may not use all these, these words that you're writing down, but you're writing down kind of thoughts about the song, of common themes. And then, and the walls kept tumbling down, and the city that we love goes on. But if you close your eyes, does it almost feel like nothing's changed at all, like we've been here before? So then you can write down this, this theme of monotony or reoccurrence or just tragedy or bad things happening. And then after you kind of assemble the themes, you can look at what's true about those themes, what cultural norms they're identifying with those themes, and then what Christian truths come out of those themes. So it's almost like, I guess the best way to do it, can I... Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so I, I've never really done it this way, but if I were to like sit down and prepare a Mars Hill speech, since I only had like four minutes, I never did this. Is this dry erase? Yeah. Okay, I guess I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. Um, so so I, would, I would create like a, a web sort of thing in a brainstorm. Um, so if you guys are preparing a speech or a paper for this, this might be a method you could use. So you might write Pompeii. And then um, out of Pompeii, you get the theme of loneliness. And then out of that, you get insecurity. And then out of that, you might also get um, redemption or something like that. So there's truths, and then there's cultural deficiencies that we're seeing. So, so and then over here, maybe you have the idea of accountability. Um, and then things are branching out from that. And then you can even go a step further. In insecurity, you might want to talk about Facebook and what Facebook has done to our generation in terms of the people on Facebook that post things that aren't as, as liked, um, that sort of thing. Because that actually is you know, a big problem that we see with our society where insecurities or narcissism are developing because of social networking or something like that. So you can really like take it a long way, but there's this idea where eventually you just have this crazy looking spider web full of ideas that branch out of the central theme of your song, Palm Day. Does that make sense? And then from there, you would just kind of assemble, here's the things I want to talk about. In terms of being systematic, in terms of organization, you can really organize it how you want. You can organize it according to themes. So you might want to talk about loneliness, then accountability, then redemption, whatever. Or you may decide to go through the progress of the song. So let's start with the verse, let's go to the chorus, and let's go to the bridge, and then let's look at the whole thing. Organization's up to you. Like I said, it's a casual thing. And you don't necessarily need to have three pinpointed points and progress from one point to another, just kind of don't have your audience wondering where you're going with it. You know, you want to be somewhat organized, but there's no formula. Okay, Ben, the bell has already rung, so I'm going to have my students dismissed here, and if you need a pass, maybe just go to... Okay, just tell them.
Just tell them that you had a guest speaker in rhetoric and it went over. Thank you very much. Okay.